All right. Well, hello, friends. Um, this is Erica here, and I'm joined with beloved Luis, Luis Macis, also known as Emancipated Human. And he is my um, second experience of having a not chat here on Steemit. And so as is going to be the tradition, we're going to dive right in. And um, I'm going to come out the gate with a question I've been wanting to ask Luis for quite a while. And it's regarding... Um, for lack of a better word, the branding that, that, that is behind Emancipated Human. When I first, you know, um, learned about you and like your handle on, on Facebook and everything, I was really taken away um, by those two words. I mean, to me, it's like, it, it says everything. And so the thing I wanted to hear you just like speak from your heart about is, um, what went into you picking, there's a lot of words, why those two? And then also there's a lot of logos and images and symbols. Why the Sri Yantra? So that's two questions. So maybe we'll do one at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, the answer to that is probably not as cool or as sophisticated as I would want it to be. Um, but like, if I give you a little background, I, I, my dad was a, an extremely entrepreneurial person and, you know, the idea of like second place is the first loser and, you know, like super like winning mentality, like, you know, he made a bunch of money, but he helped a lot of people. So like, you know, spearhead, like super badass kind of attitude, but funny at the same time. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be like my dad, right? Whatever. So um, I, I always try to be the best at everything I could. And, and, you know, I was the most popular kid growing up in like high school and junior high. I was in the varsity basketball team, even if I'm only five, nine, you know, I mean, I, I, there was nothing I couldn't do. Right. So um, whenever one of my friends presented the idea of uh, antheogens, when I was going through my yoga teacher training, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this. So, that was a, a really wonderful way to help me really focus all that energy and, and, and um, the desire to, um, to be, you know, the best. Like what ayahuasca showed me one time was that if you can imagine a, a humanity as a closed um, environment, you cannot go too far away from like, you know, like you cannot go super far if you don't empower the people that are down below. So like the way she was showing me, like she brought me all the way down to people in pain, to people in tears. I was able to see that and feel it. And she showed me, she said, if you really want to be the best, you have to help all of these people, empower them and get them out mm -hmm. so you can continue to go up. And, and so my mentality went from me to us and then to all of us, you know, the, the awareness of like, it's not just about me. If I really want to be the best, I want to be able to serve others. And, uh, you know, after several other San Pedro's and Ayahuasca's and all of that, like the idea came to me that like, I, I was telling me two things, your homework, remember your homework. And so what's my homework? To empower people and to be present. So those are two things that may sound kind of the same thing, but they're very different. And, and when you do those two things, when you're with people, that heals them and helps them um, uh, to feel empowered. And, and they're no longer living in autopilot like I was at some point, you know, because like due to uh, social programming, we just live in this automatic expectation. Mm -mm. everything was super helpful but it lacked the awareness of the totality of my humanness now some people may be stuck on the other side you know like i'm not enough i can do this whatever you know so like whatever it is that people are in that spectrum i i present myself and i i help empower them so we all can come up together and explore the totality of our uh, for life. 
So the, the name of Emancipated Human, like when I came out, I, I was like, shit, I need to do something with this. I need to like share with the world. I, I, I just have to do stuff. Um, again, the doer in me, right? So I was like, okay, hold on. So I was looking for like a website. I need, I need a website. I need a, a YouTube. I need a Facebook. I need a Twitter. I want everybody to know what I'm going through. So, uh, and so the name, you know, that's the, the, the not awesome story because I was like, free man, you know, like all the, all the liberty names were taken, all the freedom names were taken, like all the man were taken. And, 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 <laughs> I'm getting frustrated. So I was like, what the hell am I going to do? So I just kind of sat down and I kept, you know, I was on like um, some uh, website host, you know, like looking for open name. I was like, okay, shit, sure. it must be a human. <gasps> it's a word. <laughs> Why? Before somebody's neck is that name. <laughs> That's how I felt about it because I thought it was so powerful. I mean, it just, it says it like, that's a flag. I would fly all day long. And I could, and so I just thought, well, how lucky is he that he got, you know, like such a hot name. And then here, so it's just interesting how, you know, how you were, how you were led to it. And I think it's a very cool story that you were raised with this like legacy of excellence. And then, and then Aya showed you, I guess, maybe like the humble, the humble side of excellence, the underside of excellence, I suppose. And, um, and to see you integrating it. And I've seen you walk your talk as long as I've known you, um, you know, from like that, uh, we met at the conference um, two, you know, this, two years ago, or, you know, not, not this one, but the one before. And, mm -hmm. um, and that was really quick. That was my first time. I was so brand new to everything and was like, I think I was trying to get a smoothie or something. And anyway, you just were so helpful and, and had a very, I don't know, embracing energy. I think you were on your way, you know, you're on your way to a meeting. Maybe you were on your way to speak for all I know, but like you took time to direct me like, oh, and very, you know, so, so, you know, the um, commitment you made to be present, I experienced you as present. Even when I look back, I'm thinking it was probably like a really inconvenient time, you know, and all of that. But, but I, I was made to feel that I mattered, that you had time for me, even with something so trivial as like, I need a smoothie. So I just wanted to give you props for that, for um, embodying your, your brand, you know, embodying your message. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a, a common misconception that we are at a time and we don't have time and we have to rush. I mean, yeah, you have to be in places that like on time, but for the most part, I mean, it's kind of funny because we're totally out of time as it is. Like, I mean, you know, if you really think about it, we don't own time. So if uh, there was a, a wonderful uh, skit that I used to do with my uh, former uh, co-presenter, she passed away. Like we, we just explain people like, if you treat it badly and, and, and if you tell me, yeah, I don't have time, just like go find yourself, you know, like whatever time that you spend being an asshole, you can spend the same amount of time being nice. It's, it's you know, you may spend 30 more seconds or a whole minute more. And it's like, like almost the same amount of time and you have even better results. So, you know, focusing that idea of like freaking out, or, uh, I don't know, you know, like to that and people will always remember how you make them feel, you know, they, they may not remember what you say that, yeah. that may, they're like, oh yeah, that person's like, like you have that connection because they make you feel good. So you want more of that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like even when, um, cause you do these videos that I love, like from your car, and I, lo I just love the fact that you're being so efficient because like here you are, you're like headed somewhere and then you're also like dropping knowledge on the way and, um, and they're just so real and candid. Um, and I saw one recently even where I think you were doing, it must have been live because you're on the road and then you made a comment. I guess someone said like, are you driving? And you were like, no, no, I'm not driving. It's just like a green, green drop behind me, which was so funny. So it's like you're driving <laughs> and talking on the phone and making a video. So anyway. <laughs> But, um, but always doing it at this, you know, super calm, you know, muy tranquila, just so peaceful all the time. So I guess I commend that. And it's contagious, just like stress and anxiety is contagious. You know, you talk to someone that's full of nervous energy, next thing you know, you're feeling nervous. And then the opposite, too. So just in the few minutes I've been with you, I'm in training myself with you right now. 
and I notice, you know, oh, my shoulders are dropped, my breathing is slower, you know, and um, yeah, so that feels awesome. Um, wife uh, says that I'm, I'm the rock, you know, I'm not Dwayne Johnson, but she calls me her rock. <laughs> it's like, you know, that just stability of that's funny. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, love to say that. Um, let's see. Okay, so now the Sri Yantra, because I okay. noticed that it's like in so many things, you know, and it's almost like I almost like now I'm almost associating it with you because I see it, um, you know, in tandem with emancipated humans. So can you tell me how you came to use that? What's your relationship with that? And just everything, because it's a very important symbol, but I'd love to know its role in your life and in your business. Right, so for the most part, um, like a lot of things in my life, I, uh, I learned to trust my unconscious mind to the point where if I don't know something, I just ask a question and I, and I just like address it to my unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And when you create a relationship with that, it just, things just come forward. And I said, you know, like, I just closed my eyes, like, what could be a good thing that could help me? Because, uh, I mean, it's just beyond a nice looking thing. So I have always felt the connection with the Sri Yantra. And for years, I used to hang it around, like, around my neck um, because I felt like it was a form of protection. Uh, you know, it just represents the universe. Uh, Shiva Shakti creating just, you know, like the whole shibang out of uh, their enjoyment of the themselves through an orgasmic cosmic experience so i'm like what could be better than that right <laughs> and like all the feminine all the masculine dancing together and just enjoying it and, and and so like you know um one of the reasons why like you know back 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 in the day we used to have like huge heavily matriarchal societies and you know they they got taken over it was not sustainable for you know the last I don't know, three, four, five hundred years, we've had heavily patriarchal societies. And I mean, you know, both have their good things, but it's not fully sustainable. So um, what I think we need is, is a merger of Shiva Shakti energy with uh, people and, and especially those in leadership positions. So that's when like the three yantra helped me remind myself of, of that balance. You know, like I have a really uh, healthy uh female energy within me and I am able to use it and harness it to wherever I need to. Uh, you know, um, the, the, the balancing, nurturing, um, warm of, of female, you know, like I really enjoy that. And I think that that's super necessary in all aspects of, of like with relationships with people from your house, from your, whatever you need people and work and whatever. So, I mean, that's part of that. Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot more, but, but yeah, that's, that's mainly it. Okay. Um, I'm so intrigued with it because, uh, first of all, it's really, it was, <clears throat> it was um, almost surreal to hear you describe your relationship with your subconscious because um, it's really similar to what I've been experiencing as well, um, that it's like a collaboration, like me and a, a smarter self, a wiser self that can see more and that knows more and um and so and i've been trusting the you know the prompts and the suggestions and the clues and whatnot that are you know left before me and um and so i'd say probably in the last several weeks the sri yantra is is one of the things that you know was brought to me and so that's probably why so like you've had it as your logo all along but i only now saw it you know what I mean? So, so now I'm all like, oh, I'm like, I must talk to Luis about that because I'm um, meditating with it, you know, because I love, uh, I'm, real, I'm real sensitive optically. So I sun gaze, mirror gaze, I'll gaze I flame gaze, you know, I'll use, I use different things because I know that that's, that works for me. And so, um, so, the sh so there's, you know, these little videos on YouTube that I, I have found where it'll feature the Sri Yantra and it'll have like a dot right in the center. And it makes it so easy, like, for you just to focus it. And, I mean, I could do it with, pay, you know, like a, a printed one or I'm sure even, like, a necklace like you would wear. Um, but I've been, you know, using these videos. So I, I'm looking at this dot. And, and I was advised that it would 
that, you know, to expect movement from, from within. And I'm thinking, you know, and, and so, and this has no, this has no entheogens whatsoever, but it has almost a near psychedelic effect because I found like after maybe say five or six or seven minutes of gazing, then um, it's, there is movement, there is pulsing, there is something happening. And I've heard deeper descriptions about this Sri Yantra of it being, you know, being called a chariot. Um, and, it, and it's something like a vehicle that will transport you, take you, you know, I mean, to that place where um, matter and non-matter meet. And so it is way, I don't have my head even, even a little bit wrapped around it. I'm just, route, I'm just at the edges of like having the experience of it and just knowing that even though I don't fully grasp what is, what's going on, just after, a few, just after 10 minutes of gazing at that, I come away with, like, I do understand, like when you talk about that uniting of um, masculine and feminine, and, and, and so, I mean, there's, there are very helpful things that are happening to me. I can only tell by the felt effect of it. Um, and I'd like to understand it better. So, uh, so that's why, you know, I was grateful to be able to just even talk with you to find out like what its role has been. It's also been called like kind of um, um, a, an instrument of wealth. Have you heard of that or you've been familiar? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. But I guess it's because it's creation, but and destruction too. I'm not, that exactly. I'm not, so I'm not, I, I don't, uh, I'm not quite sure about its destructive effects, but I guess even in terms of like destroying shadow things, burdensome things, you know, rage, uncontrolled emotions, like those kinds of things. I would want those things destroyed. Yeah. Okay. So like there's, wow, well, you, you touched on so many cool things. So <laughs> the very first one is the chariot that transports you into a, a non-physical reality, but it really doesn't. What it does is just, it makes you aware that everything is happening right here, right now. So what it does is it just kind of broadens your perspective of life. And, and like, you know, what I was saying about seeing the totality of yourself is like, normally, would you see reality vision, right? But whenever you're like, you know, gazing at a Sri Yantra or meditating or doing entheogens, like it helps you uh, see that you're not just in this body, that you are like, I don't know, let, let me explain this to you. Uh, the way I understand it is like when you're like when I used to watch the X Files back in the nineties, uh, I used to get so like focused and engr engrossed in it that like when a commercial came, I was like, oh, oh, I was watching <laughs> Kelly. Like, like you get so. Has that happened to you? Yes. Okay. So yes. Im imagine <laughs> that uh, the commercial that separate you from the show is what you do when you're meditating. So. You suddenly become aware of more life happening around you and it's happening right here like it's just that our focus is usually on that television screen so when we're meditating that the discordian commercial comes in, it's like hey yeah there's a the television there and that's real and that's happening mm -hmm. but there's also this and there's also this and there's also this so whenever like you know you get to a point like the unconscious mind is just yourself but with the um uh, uh, timelessness so you're like in the fourth dimensional entity that can see all angles of your 3d life from all periods of time and so that's when you're able to trust and ask that uh, erica fourth dimension erica because she can see in the future because she's already there because she's always been there uh you know like a, a person is kind of like a worm that has you know from a fourth dimension you know, like you can see them from youth to like all time. Like when I'm doing healing work, I can see like the face of the person transforming from little to old to middle, depending on what needs help at that time. And I see it and I talk to it and I do that. So, and, and that's another thing, like the whole destruction and construction and building, um, like we are usually terrified of the off button of life. We just want it to be on, you know? And, and I can see myself there a lot of times. Like when I go to New York City or to a city, I'm like, I just want to be awake. I just want to do things. I just want to like, you know, like, like be, <laughs> yeah. There's times where we need to rest. There's times where we need to not do, you know, replenish the body. So that's the off button. So at any rate, like the healing work has helped me see that um, 
whenever we are aware of that fourth dimensional self or even fifth dimensional, when you get to that point, um, like life goes through you and, and it also leaves and you can see that life and death coming in and out of you. So you are one, you're not alive, you're not dead. It's just like, you're just it. The energy is just flowing and it's going and it gets pretty crazy. But like, I mean, once you get used to it, you're able to move it easier. But like the whole idea of the Sri Yantra is just the awareness of yourself in that dot because you can expand to be everything. So from you in the fourth or the fifth dimension, you can continue to expand until you think. And that's when like the miracles happen, when you're able to harness that amount of energy and move it towards the specific thing. Like, you know, um, a lot of time being through and expanding here. So like some, some picture was showing me that for, for instance, you know, like when you read a book, the letters, that's the work of somebody. And, and when you're reading it, you're getting into that world. So what he showed me is that he's in, you know, fourth, fifth dimension, beating the cactus into the third dimension so we can read his work and we can expand our knowledge. So it's like reading a book in the third dimension, but seeing his work there. And that's how he takes your hand and explains all of those things. Mm. So, I mean, it gets so exciting, you know, I'm just <laughs> like, I want more. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. A lot of times it kind of forces to speak like, okay, focus on your physical life. You know, you need to do things there too. You need to work and eat and, you know, like, so there's a balance. Like we are here for a reason. Like I always say the most important part about spiritual life is the physical life. Because we're here for a reason. Like our awareness, we chose to be here right now for a reason. Mm -hmm. So when you're aware of all of that's happening, but you're cemented here, then that's when like real cool stuff happens, like being present for people, for instance. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Well, that's I'm weird. asking yeah. that not at all, not at all. That was me soaking it in. That wasn't weird at all. Um, I was appreciating how like when, when you, cause again, okay, so you just said so much stuff, I did so much cool stuff. Um, but the one I'll, I'll ride on a little bit is like that idea of like life moving through us, you know, even as though like, like we're almost a worm or a tube of some sort. And, and what it was reminding me of is the, the way that um, time has been feeling to me for, for a very long time, actually, but a lot more recently, which is I've never identified time as linear. It's never felt linear to me, like, you know, this, this, this. And, but that's the way, as you say, that's the way it's always presented in 3D. Everything is presented as if it's linear in reality, but it's not. So I always felt that disconnect energetically, but I didn't understand that it just is a disconnect. You know, 3D suggests linear, but we know that, you know, because uh, we are multidimensional and that in other dimensions it's... Um, I don't know what, I don't know if I would say that it's circular, but it's more, it is so much more robust than, you know, just this idea of past, present, future, like you said. So I really was just appreciating you articulating and putting into words, you know, things that are ineffable, like Alan, Alan Watts, you know, talks about, like, there's this things that are just so hard even to convey, but yet even when we try to, and I think you did it really well, that it, it's helpful for those on the journey or teetering on the edges of those experiences, especially these liminal experiences where you're like, what the heck is going on? And you might, you might be inclined to, you know, have self doubt or, or to think it's not real. It didn't really happen or, or what, you know, but, and so I'm so grateful that you're there. I'm here together. We both are joining our voices to amplify the realness of, you know, that there is more beyond what we see, what we sit on, what we earn, what we touch. And, um, and yeah, there's more to it, but that, and that we can experience it and that we can even use it practically in our life. Okay. So that's going to lead me to the next question. This might need to be the last one only if I'm going to honor this format of keeping it tight. I know, right? I like, I don't even want to stop. And that's the thing, but I'm like, oh, all my stuff is long form. I write too long and, and people are always, I always get the sense that I'm like, 
like too burdensome for people. So I'm trying to keep things a little lighter. So that's why I thought I would just, I'm going to talk heavy, but shorter. <laughs> so um, we can do part, part A and part B if you want to. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so this will be the last question for this part A. Um, and that is, have you used the Sri Yantra um, in the building of your business? in any way. So like for, as an example, I noticed like on Facebook, you know, you've got something like almost like 68,000 likes. I mean, that's impressive. That's really impressive, you know, and um, you're very magnetic, very charismatic. And, and I think that a lot of that has to do with um, the attractiveness of light, the attractiveness of presence, you know, the fact that you are what you talk. Um, but in addition to, you know, say being smart and technologically savvy and understanding things about SEO and stuff, would, would you say that you use things like um, metaphysical devices to leverage business success? Yes. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent cliffhanger. <laughs> That's a cool tease. Come on, give a little. <laughs> okay, so shit, I, I just can't like you know answer so succinctly because this is so heavy. Okay, one time during a ceremony, I I don't wear my Sri Yantra anymore. I don't, yeah. and there's a reason for that. Um, one time I was in a ceremony and I just got my ass chewed by this huge dark heavy energy that was just messing with me, and I just like. There was a point, like I was fairly green in, in, in the healing work, so I didn't really have the tools or the knowledge or whatever. I was so afraid, so afraid. I had never been so afraid in my life. Like I was so paralyzed and just kind of like on the grass, just kind of like doing this. I was so anxious. I was just like, <gasps> like I was so afraid. I was like, I just, just don't, don't just kill me. Just, just obliterate me. I don't want to be here. This is way too much. This is super scary. And like, you know, in my mind, I was like, well, shit, there goes the three yantra, you know, like, I mean, like an actual object has no power, like just anything has no, it, it is whatever you give to it. So from then on, I, I realized that the, the success is not thanks to the three yantra, the success is not thanks to having Ganesh on my dresser, you know, the, the, like all of those things, they're just... Um, tools that help you focus your attention to achieve what you want the real tool is here and here like these two guys are stronger than any street entry stronger than any anything that you may have on your hands stronger than any of these things <laughs> i mean i have a ton of them stronger of any of these mm, things mm. like the, 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 this in itself is. Are you going to protect your property with your mind? Your mind is going to tell you to get the gun. <laughs> well, you're going to okay. there's, I, and this probably for part B, but I have done that. 